Hi there, this is Phil with PhilFX, and uh, I've got the final part of uh, our animation that we're doing on our pendulum, and this should actually go pretty quick, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to now move out of our step timing, and we're going to progress to, uh, I'm going to show a linear and a spline timing, and we can see what's best, but we'll, you can see just how rapid you can get to a very good solution with just some cleanup work by initially starting with that block timing. So let's go ahead and get started. What I want to do is let's select all of our controls and we can look at them and you can see all the step timing here of all the controls. And uh, let's put this back in the beginning and let's go ahead and we'll play this once so we can see this going through. And you can see our blocked out timing. And it's progressing and moving fairly good across the screen. So let's go in Go this to the beginning. I'm going to just drag across here and select all of these keys. And let's look at this initially with just linear timing. So all I need to do is have all those keys selected and click linear. And you can see now we've got linear timing on all of that. So let's play this forward and see what that looks like. So Maya is doing some interpolation. And it doesn't look too great. Uh, the reason for that, uh, in particular, is linear timing doesn't have any ease in, in, ease in or ease out. It is exactly as the name says, it's linear. So while many times linear timing is the right thing uh, for an object or for something that you're doing in animation, in this particular case, it really doesn't work well with this. So let's stop, go back to the beginning, and I'm going to go to uh, spline timing. And so you can see down here with my curve editor, We've got nice uh, continuous waveforms here, and let's play this through. <clears throat> you can see just how much that ease in and ease out adds to the overall timing. And uh, uh, this looks really quite good, at least for a first pass. So what you would want to do to clean this up is first you'd want to look at uh, the... Uh, uh, main contributors to the motion here. And let's look at the z-axis. So you'd want to work your way down this chain in cleaning things up. So let's look at the z-axis and that's the motion back and forth across our screen here. So we can go in I can take a look at that. And what we may want to do I think is as we come into these, we have a little more of a pause. I want some more hang time on here. So what I can do is I can select this, and uh, I have weighted tan. I believe I have weighted tangents. If not, let me go in and we want uh, weighted tangents. I didn't have it, so we want to put a weighted tangent on there. And what a weighted tangent allows me to do is look at I can I can take and uh, spread this out so I get a lot more flattening at these uh, transition points. So I weight that more there and I want to go into here, select this key, go in and put a weighted tangent on that and then I can stretch this out to flatten that in and come into our final uh, stopping point. Same kind of thing, I want to go in, put in a weighted tangent on that and I can stretch that out so it just slows a lot more as it comes into it. And I can change this waveform and look at this one and change that and go in and we can change that one. So let's take a look and see what this does. All right. I like that a lot better. So we're getting a little pause at both of the breaks when we go left to right, right to left, and then it comes in. So that's a lot, I think that's a lot cleaner. So we start with that for our base timing on the top. And now we can, uh, let's look at this translate Y. This actually is not moving much. Uh, it kind of surprised me when I first looked at this and I realized even that I had trans translations in Y. Uh, I think what's going on here is, uh, well, I, honestly, I don't know because I was only grabbing the uh, 
axis. So something very subtle. You can see from the units here, we go from 0 to 0.2 to minus 0.2. And so there really isn't anything visible going on in the y-axis. So what we may want to do actually is to take all of these and zero their values out and put in a value of zero for all of that and just let that go because you really don't have any real transitions in the y-axis and you can see just playing this back it doesn't look any different than what it did before all right so all of our animation for the top really is in that z-axis so let's go in and then we'll work progressively down uh, this chain here and look at these and so I think control one is my first one let me check on that yes so that's what I want to be working with so what we want to do is look and see how this transitions I come in to here and then it goes that way I think the only thing I'd want to do looking at this is maybe have a little more angle at this point. Flatten that out. And let me uh, give me a little more space. Let me increase that angle just a little bit. And let's look at these. This is here. And then this would ease in. I think I want even a little more straightening. Maybe even start to show it starting to swing around this direction. All right. So we've got that so then I look at the next one I'm actually not gonna work this all the way through but I think you get the idea and using a combination again like I said I don't want to do my students homeworks for for them but we can go through on each of these rotations and by either changing the keys to weighted weighted tangents on the keys aligning things and stretching things and possibly even in some places adding a couple more in-between keys, we can make our animation so we get nice transitions with nice overlapping action on the bottom of this pendulum. And we were able to do this really quite rapidly by using this breakdown method where we use step keys to initially set things up and then transition all of your keys to either a spline or in this case, the better choice is to, or, or excuse me, linear and the best case in this uh, example is to use a, a, a spline keys. So this has been Phil with Phil Effects and hopefully this will help you out if you're trying to work on uh, animations with the pendulum. Thanks a lot.